Hey guys, it's Take a Bite here with an overview of the latest Simu version 1.6.4. This version doesn't bring any game changing improvements, however, it does bring greater stability, improved accuracy, and many other small improvements. Let's get started with our first game, Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8 is consistently showing off how quickly Simu is progressing, and the progress is definitely visible in 1.6.4 as well. When viewing footage of 1.6.4 next to 1.6.2, it is easy to tell how much more accurate the colors are, along with improved anti-aliasing, shadows, and graphical improvements all around. From a performance standpoint, 1.6.4 also shows improvements with the general FPS and caching speed. In past versions, it would take one or two full races to cache, and after a restart of Simu, it still wouldn't be perfect. However, in 1.6.4, by the second race without restarting, Mario Kart will already be extremely close to maintaining that solid 60 FPS, and it typically does. Besides the occasional stutter, Mario Kart is almost indistinguishable from the native Wii U on this version, and it is extremely close to being perfect. Although it's not as rapid as Mario Kart, the improvements found in Smash 4 are very promising and are showing great performance gains. As I mentioned in the 1.6.2 overview, the biggest issue in Smash remains to be the sound. No matter if you're at a solid 60 FPS in the menus or 10 FPS in game, the audio remains staticky, garbled, and doesn't really sound like much of anything. As far as graphics go, the game is looking very similar to the native hardware, besides the darkness present throughout the whole game. Although it's not extremely noticeable, if you've seen the game being played on Wii U, it's a night and day difference. It's actually fairly noticeable. Along with the audio, Smash 4 suffers from somewhat poor stability compared to many other games on Simo. If you're looking for the most stable experience, play a two-person match on a rather basic map with items disabled. This will be the easiest for Simu to run due to the scarcity and lack of complexity of the assets it needs to cache, and the lack of variable caching from the random items. When playing like this, I was able to stay around 50 to 60 FPS with the expected occasional stutters. Playing with items had a similar FPS range, however the stutters were more often and happened when an item was used for the first time. It becomes a nuisance, but it is still playable at the least. Four person matches remain to be somewhat of a struggle for Simu, but it is far improved from the last version. Due to the two additional characters, there are additional assets that need to be cached, but after the initial stutters, it runs surprisingly similar to a two person match. The game rarely, if ever, maintains 60 FPS, but it does consistently fluctuate from about 40 to 55 frames typically. Once you add items into the mix, the stutters do become more abundant, but Smash stays close to a 40 to 55 FPS range. The game is definitely improving quickly and will be much more enjoyable once all the sound issues are sorted out. While testing 1.6.4, Super Mario 3D World was one of the rare cases where I didn't really need to even cache the game before running at a solid high frame rate. Right from the bat, this game ran with extremely solid frame rates and looks indistinguishable from the Wii U version. The glitch with the ground disappearing after completing a course is now gone and I couldn't find any other graphical issues while playing. The only place with noticeably slower FPS is when selecting a map from the world view. Besides the very occasional stutters, 3D World is another case of Team Simu's excellence and is a very playable experience as of 1.6.4. As far as Super Mario Maker goes, there's nothing really new to say honestly. This game was one of the best running games originally, and it still runs perfect. The frame rate is superb, and only has the rarest dropper stuttering during menu transitions or the caching of a brand new effect. All we need now is online, and this game will be almost identical to the Wii U version. Super Mario Bros U and Luigi U are both very stable, and another case of a game you barely have to cache before playing. It is stable across the board besides your occasional stutter here and there, but besides that, expect a solid 60 frames along with the occasional 55. When launching Splatoon for the first time, it takes unusually long, and the game runs far slower than it typically should. Splatoon is an example of a game where it is absolutely necessary to cache the game the first time playing and then go back to replay. After the rocky first launch, the game runs extremely solid at almost a locked 60 besides the semi-rare stutters. One thing to note is if mapping left and right trigger to ZL and ZR in this game, it's not going to work. For some reason, it's necessary to remap ZL and ZR to their respective bumpers. Although Splatoon requires a solid caching before it is playable, afterwards it is an enjoyable and stable experience. Sadly, you won't be seeing any Pokken tournament gameplay today. 
After the two button prompts while going through the menus, the game freezes on the black start screen. After waiting for quite a while, I call it quits. Here's to hoping the next version makes this game playable. Wind Waker is definitely improved on 1.6.4, but it is definitely still not maintaining a solid 30 FPS. The game is prone to stuttering a little more than other titles, and has many locations where the FPS will drop to around 15 or lower. However, despite this lower FPS, the game is now more stable and no longer crashes when you enter the woods to save Tetra. Shadows are no longer a jagged issue, but now are much softer and more complete than in previous versions. Graphically, the game doesn't seem to have any issues. The bloom is not overdone, and saturation seems to be on par with the vanilla version. Although not perfect, Wind Waker should definitely be playable for you on 1.6.4, despite the occasional stutters and periods of low FPS. Yoshi's Woolly World is very similar to Splatoon, in the way that it needs to be cached before the game is playable at a very solid frame rate. However, after a level is played through once, Yoshi remains to be a pretty stable game, staying right around the 55 to 60 FPS mark. The one exception to this is what appears to be a locked 30 FPS in the map menu. However, on 1.6.4, I can't entirely recommend Yoshi's Woolly World as a stable experience. The black yarn crash I showed in 1.6.2 is still an issue, but it did not occur every time. Along with the black yarn, the zipper doors also caused the game to crash in more than one occurrence. This experience might differ from user to user, but I can't say Yoshi is definitely playable on 1.6.4. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is another great game to play on Simu, and another game that you don't really have to cache before playing. On the first launch, there will be an occasional stutter, but it is playable and extremely stable after that point, maintaining a solid 60 FPS throughout the most of the game. The abundance of bloom found in past versions appears to be fixed, although when comparing the Simu footage to native footage, Simu does appear to be slightly more saturated. It is nothing that will ruin the gameplay experience, however. Treasure Tracker is definitely playable on 1.6.4, and is a great game to show off the touchpad compatibility Simu currently has. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is the latest addition to my overview videos, and this game is a great playable addition to the list. However, the game is plagued with more graphical issues than any other game in this video. Many textures and models can be found flickering throughout the game, along with UI elements. The worst offender of this is whenever you pick up a banana, the whole screen in fact, goes bananas. There is a strange artifacting that occurs, but it is a mere distraction more than a game-breaking glitch. Also, it is noticeable that out of all the games I went over in this video, Donkey Kong Country appears to be running at the lowest resolution, along with a combination of heavy aliasing. However, that doesn't stop Tropical Freeze from being an extremely fun game and playable on 1.6.4. One issue throughout all of Simu that I am eagerly awaiting the fix of is the lack of text and pop-ups and just missing text throughout the whole emulator. It affects almost every game, and while prompts are typically guessable without the text, that would be a groundbreaking addition to the next version. Also, with the 1.6.4 update, Simu introduced bicubic upscaling as opposed to bilinear, allowing games to look far smoother and is extremely noticeable while playing in full screen. Team Simu has done it again with this superb update, and it's amazing to see how quickly this emulator continues to improve. Although there were no game-changing new features added, Simu continues to add features allowing greater accuracy and stability. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and please leave a like or click that other button and leave a comment to tell me what you thought. Also, maybe consider subscribing to help this channel continue to grow. I'd also like to thank you guys so much for getting me to 600 subscribers in just 2 months and reaching 50,000 views. I never expected to get this much attention, and it leaves me optimistic for the future to come. Also, if you guys could spare 30 seconds to answer the straw poll in the description, it would mean a ton. I have no idea what kind of content you guys want to see next, and I hope this will point me in the right direction. That's all for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.